we have big news that has recently come out from Walgreens Boots Alliance. In their most recent earnings report, they announced they're going to be reducing their quarterly dividend payments by 48%, now making their quarterly dividend payments around 25 cents per share. So this is a massive dividend cut for the company, something you obviously don't want to see if you're a shareholder. Now, if you're someone who knows how to properly analyze a company, you know this was a very predictable dividend cut. So in this video, I'm going to do two things. I want to show you exactly why this was a very predictable dividend cut, but we're also going to be jumping into my stock valuation spreadsheet to see if we can find the intrinsic value of Walgreens. And like always, if you want to download any of my spreadsheets, you can head over to my Patreon page. Let's go ahead and start digging into Walgreens. We'll start off by just looking at some key metrics. Now, over the past year, they're down around 35.78% and year to date down around 10.38%. Keep in mind, we've only had a couple of trading days to start off the new year. So obviously this most recent earnings report really pushing down the share price in 2024. If we come over here and look at the starting dividend yield, we can see it's showing 7.51 percent but that does not take into account the most recent dividend cut so if we jump over to my stock valuation spreadsheet we can see the quarterly dividend payments now 25 cents per share meaning one dollar per year giving them a starting dividend yield after the dividend cut of 4.19 percent so again around a 48 percent decrease in their dividend payments now let's go ahead and start seeing why this was such a predictable dividend cut now one thing we need to understand is this company has a really nice dividend history they've been increasing dividends for almost 47 consecutive years and if we jump over to the dividend safety tab scroll down look at these payout ratios on the surface level they look fairly safe and if we look at the cash flow payout ratio it looks fairly safe sitting at 44 0.41%. So why did the company have to cut their dividend? Again, on the surface level, great history of paying out dividends, payout ratios look decent. So why did they have to cut their dividend? Well, the first thing we need to do is dig into the balance sheet just a little bit more. If we come over to the balance sheet, the first thing we need to do is look at the company's short-term cash and cash equivalents. How much cash do they have on hand? And one of the things you'll notice if we look right here, this is a number that has been dwindling in the most recent years. And as of the last report, it was sitting at around 728 million. Now, whether or not that's actually good or bad kind of depends on how much debt the company currently has. So let's go ahead and scroll down and start looking for the company's total debt. Right here, we can see long-term debt. This is a really important number when judging the safety of a dividend payout. And you can see as of the last report, it's sitting at around 8.15 billion. So the ratio of short-term cash equivalents to long-term debt is not looking good at all for the company. They have very low levels of cash and very high levels of debt. That's the first red flag we need to take into account. If we scroll back up, let's go ahead and look at the income statement. Let's look at the revenues. Revenue growth has been decent over the past decade for the company. Nothing crazy, but again, the revenues are growing. Now, the question is, is this finding its way into the bottom line? So if we scroll down, let's go ahead and find net income, and we can see this number right here. If we look at this charted out, we can see those growing revenues have not found their way to the bottom line. Net income has actually been declining pretty drastically over the past couple of years and we can see as of 2023 they reported negative net income so if a company has increasing revenues and declining net income that's a sign of very poor margins not a good sign for the company at all again that's another red flag for the company but to me one of the most important things we need to look at is is there free cash flow per share growing over time and again dividends are paid out of free cash flow and before the dividend cut they were looking to pay out $1.92 per share in dividends and again that would come from their free cash flow per share so to be able to pay out $1.92 in dividends their free cash flow per share would have to be above $1.92 so where can we find this metric let's jump back over to the financial statements and look at the statement of cash flows if we scroll down all the way to the bottom right here you can see we found our free cash flow per share and if we look at this charted out we can see something we don't like again this is something that has been declining over the past five or six years and if we look at the trailing 12 months Walgreens free cash flow per share is sitting just at 16 cents that is absolutely horrendous and if we look where they were in 2021 around four dollars and 83 cents it's a pretty healthy range for their dividend payout but it declined to two dollars and fifty cents and now it declined all the way to around 16 cents so if a company doesn't have the free cash flow generated to be able to pay out dividends one of the things they could do is pay it out of their cash and cash equivalents but like we just saw that would not be a wise move for Walgreens as they're already sitting on very low levels of cash and cash equivalents and their total debt is extremely high Walgreens already needs to generate 
more free cash flow to start paying down that debt, and they're definitely not generating enough free cash flow to pay down debt and pay out their large dividend payments right now. So you can tell a lot about the safety of the dividend payment simply by looking at different financial statements. Sometimes on the surface level, it can look like a dividend payment is safe simply if you simply just look at some of the payout ratios, but again, sometimes it's deeper than that. So from an investor standpoint, obviously seeing a dividend cut is almost something you never want to see, but from Walgreens perspective, it was undoubtedly the right move. If the company wants to eventually be able to reinvest back into the business and start paying down debt, then they really needed to cut their dividend. Now let's go ahead and jump over to my stock valuation spreadsheet and start digging into this a little bit more. And like always, you can download the spreadsheet on my Patreon page at the link in the description. We'll run it through a few different valuation models. Let's go ahead and jump over to my stock screener. And like always, depending on what you plug in right here, all of this data will automatically load in. So let's go ahead and plug in Walgreens. Now, like I already mentioned, the starting dividend yield is now sitting at 4.17%. And let's have a target price of around $26 per share, institutional ownership around 58.56%, and a beta of just 0.75. And that essentially means you should see less volatility with this company than that of the market. But let's go ahead and run it through our first valuation, which is going to be Graham's valuation. This basically values a company based on what the expected earnings per share growth is. If we jump over to Seeking Alpha, look at that earnings per share forward looking. It's projected to be 3.33. So we have that number plugged in right here. And the growth rate projections for Walgreens are extremely low. There's essentially no growth priced into this company. Now we multiply that by 4.4, which is the average yield on AAA corporate bonds, and divide by Y, which is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. And at the time of this video, it's sitting at 4.75. So when I hit enter, you can see we come to an intrinsic value of around $21.59. And if we jump back over to the stock screener, that's somewhat close to the current trading price. It's still a few dollars above that. But let's go ahead and move forward and look at our discounted cash flow analysis. Now, again, one of the things you'll notice with the discounted cash flow analysis is the growth rate projection for the company's free cash flow is very low, sitting at 1%. Now, with the dividend cut, it is possible we could see slightly higher free cash flow growth if the company's able to use some of that free cash flow to reinvest back into the business. But again, we have low growth rate projections for Walgreens. So again, we use that growth rate to project the future free cash flows, find the present value of those future free cash flows, add those together, add the company's cash and cash equivalent, subtract out the total debt to get equity value, divide by our shares outstanding, and we come to a discounted cash flow price per share of around $21. The next valuation we typically use is the multiples valuation, but there's not a lot of great comparables for Walgreens, so I don't really use it in this scenario. So the next one we'll use is the dividend discount model. Now this one is obviously gonna look radically different after we have our dividend cut because we had a decent amount of time with pretty high dividend payouts and growing dividends even though it was low growth, but after this most recent dividend cut, it was a cut of around 48%. So we now have 25 cent quarterly dividend payouts and $1 per year dividend payouts. Assuming a dividend growth rate of just around 1%, discount rate of 8.5%, we come to a dividend discount model price per share of just $13.47. So again, the dividend cut took a huge toll in the valuation with the dividend discount model. But when we jump over to the output tab, we can see our three valuations, grams at 21.59, DCF at 21, and dividend discount model at 13.47. That gives us an intrinsic value of $18.69, a decent bit below that current trading price. So with a 10% margin of safety, our acceptable buy price is sitting at around $16.82, 20% margin of safety, $14.95. Again, this is a clear example of why it's so important to be able to look at the company's financial statements to understand the health of their dividend payments. A dividend cut from this company was very predictable if you knew where to look. And if you look at my most recent video on Walgreens before this one, you can see how I pointed out that a dividend cut was very likely in the near future. As for me, I don't have any interest in adding Walgreens to my personal portfolio at this time. The company has very low growth rates. I don't really trust the dividend payments still, and they are drowning in debt. So the key lesson, again, just because a company is a dividend aristocrat and has a high starting dividend yield does not make it an attractive investment for dividend investors. But there you go. There's a quick analysis on Walgreens Boots Alliance. Like always, if you'd like to download this spreadsheet and join a community of dividend investors, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.